Amen. Let's all stand. We'll sing as we gather. Amen. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as all hearts begin to worship, all will be blessed because we came, oh, we'll be blessed because we came, hallelujah, oh, as we gather, may your spirit work within us. Yes, Lord. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, oh, because we came, oh, we'll be blessed because we came, amen, do you believe that? Oh, as we gather, may your spirit work within us as we gather may we glorify your name knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship oh because we came, oh, we'll be blessed because we came, hallelujah, amen, I, be I believe that this morning, amen, that there's blessings in this room that the Lord's just waiting for us to reach out and grab a hold of. Amen. Amen. He, he know, we know that his word never fails. And he says, you know, if there's two or three, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Amen. We quote that a lot, but I think that's because we need to be reminded about it. Because we get stuck in our human ways and our ways of thinking. And the devil beats us up. But, you know, I believe that, you know, if we really come with a with sincerity with a desire in our heart that the lord will just meet our needs i believe he'll meet them amen so many times we there's a lot of things that we can do in life that has no value uh, maybe a temporal value but you know things the way we respond to the word now in these services and when the lord deals with our hearts that's eternal amen oh my so let's just uh go to the lord in prayer uh the nazarene building will be open this afternoon for anybody who wants to go there to go to there to fellowship it'll be the it's the um those of you who were at the marshmallow building last year it's the it's just the got the front room where the tables and the crock pots and everything were that's that part is rented so if anybody wants to go there for fellowship you're welcome also um keep uh Sister Net and and in prayer and and Ghana, they're going to send her home, but she's still going to be on medication. So just pray the Lord will continue the work there. Also, Brother Enoch said they're going to be having meetings December 31st and January 1st. And just pray for our brother in those meetings. Uh, pray for Brother James. 
He's not feeling very well this morning. Uh, his neck's been giving him a problem, so just pray that the Lord just touch his neck and, and give him strength there. Also, um, p- please pray for Sister Betsy. Uh, or, sorry, please, please pray for my granddaughter Riley. Her dad was recently killed in an accident. She is also fighting cancer, and she's 16. So let's just pray for that a young girl. The Lord will just have mercy on her. We know that the devil uses those things in young people's lives to just try to destroy them. But we know we serve a great God. Amen. How many have a need they want to bring before the Lord this morning? Amen. Let's, it's good to have the demons all back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll give uh, Caleb a hard time. I told your dad that some people do anything to get out of work day. <laughs> just kidding. Amen. Amen. So let's just go Lord in prayer. Um, Brother uh, Ronnie, you can just go ahead and pray for us from right there. You can just open us up in prayer, brother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. You all can be seated. Amen. Let's sing Flow Through Me, Holy Spirit. Bye. 
by thy name. Forgive through me, Holy Spirit, forgive through me. Oh, live through me, amen. Oh, live through me, Holy Spirit, live through me. That's my desire, Lord. Oh, live through me, Holy Spirit, live through me. As I live my hands to worship and to magnify thy name, live through me, Holy Spirit, live through me. Hallelujah. Amen. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointing which strengthens me. Amen. Oh, thank the Lord Jesus for that strength. Amen. King's Highway. <clears throat> oh, my way gets brighter. My load gets lighter. Walking up the King's Highway. There's joy in knowing with Him I'm going, walking up the King's Highway. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there, oh, but the pure in heart. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Walking up the King's Highway You don't have to worry You don't have to worry Walking up the King's Highway Christ walks beside me Angels will guide me Walking up the King's Highway Oh, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Walking up the King's Highway. If you're not walking, Start while I'm talking, walking up the King's Highway. There'll be a blessing, you'll be possessing, walking up the King's Highway. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there, oh, but the pure in heart. Oh, it's a way to heaven, walking up the King's Highway. Oh, it's a way to heaven. None can walk up there. But the pure in heart, oh, it's a way to heaven, walking up the King's Highway. Hallelujah. How many are thankful to be on that highway? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We know that, you know, Brother Brown talked about that woman that tried to say that she could walk, I think he had a dream. I believe about the woman in the high hills that said, I can walk on there with these high hills. And she tottered and fell off. And, you know, that's it's scary when you get off to the sides. You know, when you get off in the ditches and, you know, you wonder why you're having issues. Just stay in the middle of that highway. Amen. <laughs> Lord, do I have something on that's keeping me from moving the way I'm supposed to move? Amen. It might, might not be high hills, but could be an attitude or something like that. Amen. Oh, my. Just help me to keep walking, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if Adelaide and Kara have their special for us.
I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing. The circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessing every promise he is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possible. I pray for your healing, circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, come believe it. Come receive it. The power of His Spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it, come receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, all things are possible. I pray for your healing, the circumstances would change. Pray that the fear inside will flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name, I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. Pray that the dead will come alive. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. How many are thankful for that great name of our Lord Jesus? Amen. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing that. <clears throat> oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Hallelujah. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst 
rest on my side. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh yes, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. submission all is at rest I and my Savior am happy and blessed oh watching and waiting looking above amen where are you looking at Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Oh yes, this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Oh, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh yes, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. You have to be in a special place to be able to do that. And it's called the Shekinah glory, amen, because, you know, in our flesh, we get in all kinds of things and circumstances and storms and clouds and just that get you to a place where you don't feel like praising. But, you know, when you're in that place with him, Brother Bram said, when everything else is shut out, I don't know how that works, but it, ha it works. <laughs> now, you can be in the middle of the hardest battle trial you've ever been in. But in your heart, you know that I'm shut in. I'm shut in with God. And there's nothing the devil can do to me, to my family. Amen. I, I just put my trust in Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing, I'm amazed. Amen. As we start to turn over the order of the service, let's just really pull on the gift in Brother Joel's life. Just looking to what the Lord has for us this morning. Amen. Amen. No one knew how alone I was feeling In the emptiness I tried so hard to hide And though I laughed and said my life was fine without you I was covering up the secret tears I cried. No one knew, someone told me. In the love you showed on a hill called Calvary. Oh, there you died 
been purchased by redemption. Amen. When you broke sin's power and set my spirit free, yes, I am, Lord, I'm amazed, hallelujah, that you love me. Oh, I'm amazed, Lord, how you care about me, how you care, oh, through your precious blood I've parted. Oh, and my sins are washed, they're all washed away, oh, my sins are washed away. Yes, it's true, there have been days I have failed you, Lord, you Know the many times I've gone astray, but I've learned your love is stronger than my weakness. In your ears open, amen. Thank you, Lord. No one else has ever cared for me like you, Lord. Other friends could never be as close to me. I'm not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow. Hallelujah! Knowing you are everything I'll ever need. Oh, I'm amazed that you love me. Yes, I'm amazed how you care through your precious blood I found pardon. Oh, in my sins are washed, they're all washed away. All my sins are washed. Let's sing that second verse. Amen. Yes, it's true, there have been days I have failed you. Oh, Lord, you know the many times I've gone astray. Oh, but I've learned your love is stronger than my weakness. And your ear is open every time I pray. Oh, no one else has ever cared for me like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Other friends could never be as close to me. Oh, I'm not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow. Knowing you are everything I'll ever need. I'm amazed that you love me. Let's all stand. I'm amazed how you care. Oh, through your precious blood, I found pardon. And my sins are washed. They're all washed all my sins are washed away oh I'm amazed how you pay your precious blood I found How many know that your sins are washed away? Amen. There's nothing like it in the world. You can never be the same once you ever know that they're actually gone. They're not there anymore. Praise the Lord. The devil can remind you all day long, but you know they're not there because they went under the blood. Praise the Lord. They're just not there anymore. 
Amen. We sure appreciate the Lord for bringing Brother Joel and Sister Lily and the kids our way. We just look forward to what the Lord would have for us today. And we know there's a gift in His life, so let's just pull on the gift. We'll sing that chorus again. I'm just going to step out of the way. Just let the Lord take the service this morning. Amen. this morning. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful unto you, Lord. Father, to know what it means to be found. Lord, to have been wandering in darkness, Lord, and to, Lord, let the light shine across our path, Father. Lord, and to be drawn, Lord, by the Father. And Father, even not fully recognizing what was happening at the time, but just to see the love of a Father, Lord, that would come and seek us and find us, Lord, knew exactly where we were, knew what time it would be on the earth, Lord. And Father, you haven't lost a single one, Father. And we're grateful, Lord, for the voice, Lord, that calls. We just ask, Lord, this morning that you'll bless this portion of the service, Lord. Father, we commit ourselves to you, Lord, that, Father, that you'll speak mightily to us, Lord. And Father, you know how to minister to the hearts of your people, Father. And God, we just are leaning upon you, Lord. And Father, we're grateful for our brother, Lord, opening up his pulpit this morning, Father. And Lord, for the fellowship that we've had, Lord, we certainly appreciate the believers here, God. Just thankful, Lord, to see, Lord, the believers standing true in such a very deceptive, Lord, and a very trying hour, Father. But I'm thankful, Father, that we're overcomers, Lord, in you. And we just pray, Lord, that you bless the word, bless the reading of your word, Lord. And we commit the service in their hands. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you'd like to turn to Acts, the second chapter, with me this morning. Amen. We greet you in the name of the Lord, local assembly at home. We greet you. And uh, you're always in our thoughts and our prayers. Amen. So we want to start at verse 29. And we want to speak on a subject this morning called the trial of obedience. Amen. Amen. The trial of obedience. So in verse 29 there it says, and since I've got a little older, I take my glasses off once in a while here. So... <laughs> Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this, before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, 
both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Now, it might seem like a strange scripture to speak about the trial of obedience, and even a strange title, because oftentimes when we read in the Bible what a trial is, we think of great troubles. We think of great troubles that come with a trial, that we that there's a hardship we're going through that's very hard trial. But I want to look at it from a different perspective here this morning, is thinking about that there is a trial of testing or a trial of obedience. Yes. Amen. We know that in the different things that man builds is that before he presents it out to show the world if it's an inventor and he's got an idea, he goes and he tests everything that he knows about it that he thinks could go wrong to make sure that it's fixed before he sends out, so he puts it through all of these trials. He doesn't tell anybody about it. He doesn't, many times he's in his lab, top secret. Nobody can look in there and see what's going on. But when it's all said and done, and he feels that he's ready to display it and to show what it can do, he's put it through all of the trials. He's found all of its weak points and found everything, every flaw that he could think of to put it out there and to present what he has been working on. Yeah. Amen. To present what he is working on. And we know that God has a bride that will be without spot or wrinkle. This bride will be tested. This bride will go through great trials. This bride, and when we say the bride, I want you to think about you this morning. Yeah. Being individual. God's dealing with us on an individual level. So God is dealing with you and he's putting you through a trial. He's putting you through the trial of obedience because he wants to see how you are walking according to his leadership. Yeah. Amen. Now, as we have looked in this opening scripture here, very familiar to us. Anybody that's read the Bible any length of time knows this great event that took place. And we sometimes as we read it, we kind of we don't necessarily forget the significance of it. But this was the greatest moment at that time. Jesus had to go to the cross and die. We know that. But this was the greatest moment for humankind because now God was getting ready to do what he promised, that his word was not just going to be on a table of stone anymore, but his word was going to be written on the, his laws. His word was going to be written on the fleshy tables of the human heart. Amen. And with it was coming something that was so that was so powerful, that was so supernatural, it's a supernatural work, a supernatural working of the Holy Spirit, that the supernatural God would make His abode, amen, in a temple that was made of flesh. Yeah. Amen. amen, it is what was promised. And all of these things about Jesus' birth and His coming, amen, we see that the, Israel, that the Israelites, they were looking for this. They were looking for a Messiah. They were looking for somebody. Of course, they were looking at for not exactly the reason they were thinking of. They heard, okay, well, he's going to make his foes, his, uh, his foes are going to be cast down. He's going to destroy them. He's going to do all of these things. The Romans are going to be kicked out and we'll be free. Yeah. Amen. But it was an even greater freedom than that. Right. Amen. Amen. It was an even greater freedom than that. Hallelujah. And so these things that God was working, how it was all coming together. How he was, the time had to be right. The season had to be right. The right people had to be on the yeah. earth at the right yeah. time for everything to fall into place just as God saw it before there even was a world. Yeah. Because he knew that after this moment, there would be 
a whole bunch of people afterwards that were his children that had to come to this experience that God had put in his word that was for everybody that could hear the voice Amen. of the Father. Yes, Amen. Amen. And so as the Holy Spirit was poured out on Pentecost and the Holy Spirit was poured out not amongst the Gentiles, because remember for a season, God was bringing this light to the Jews and Paul's ministry was to who? The Gentiles. It was after the Jews, after he said, seeing that you have counted yourselves unworthy of this, I turn and go to the Gentiles. Amen. But for a season, God had some Jewish believers, real Jewish believers that were going to live according to the scriptures that was promised to them. Somebody was to believe it. Somebody was to receive it. Amen. Somebody was going to receive what God had promised. Amen. But that reception had to come by obedience. Amen. That reception had to come by obedience. Now, as these great spiritual events had took place, they come bursting out of the upper room. And as they sat and they were listening to the things that was being spoke, at first when they looked at it, they saw a bunch of people that were acting very strangely. They thought they were all drunk with natural wine. Amen. And they were watching them and all of a sudden, they, and it sounded like to them, maybe they're just speaking a bunch of gibberish. Seems like they're acting crazy. And then all of a sudden, somebody stopped and heard. And it's like, wait a second, I recognize that word. Wait a second now. I'm hearing in my own tongue about Jesus. Amen. And someone else says, you know, I'm from a different place. I'm hearing in my own tongue about Jesus. Amen. And God, as he was doing this, amen, they, he was pouring himself out, amen, in a way that the people had to recognize that it wasn't just the emotion of human beings, amen. amen, it wasn't just the emotions under the stimulation of some drug or some kind of an alcoholic beverage, Amen. But it was the very thing that God had promised. Amen. Amen. It was being poured out. And then Peter, as they were all watching, he said, this is not what you think. These people are not mad. These people are not drunk as you suppose. But this is the fulfillment of Amen. the scripture. Amen. You have read it. You have heard about it, that it was going to be someday. Uh -huh. This is the fulfillment of the scripture. Amen. And this has come because of what you did to this man that was called Jesus. Amen. And as the believers heard this and realized they were convicted in their hearts for what they had done, for what their leaders had done, they were convicted in their hearts for crucifying Christ. And all of a sudden, amen, they begin to say, wait a second, is there something that we can do about this? Is there something that we can do to get the blood of Jesus off of our hands? Amen. Of what our fathers have done, what our leaders have done. Is there any way to do it? Amen. And Peter says, well, this is what you do. Amen. All you have to do is repent. Amen. All you have to do is repent. Amen. And at this repentance, this same spirit that you have seen fallen on this first bunch is promised to you. This is the promise. It is Amen. promised to you if you are willing to receive it. Amen. Amen. If you're willing to receive it. Because we see that all through the Old Testament and what Paul has wrote in the New Testament, especially as we look at it in the book of Acts, when we see the things that God promised to do in the lives of the believers, as that message was being not just preached, because the message has to be preached first. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's got to be a preaching of the message. Otherwise, how do you know what to do? Amen. How do you know what you need to repent of? Or what God's process is, unless God tells somebody through a messenger to bring it to the people. Romans 10, 17 tells us that. Amen. How will they know except the message is preached to them? Amen. And the way that God expresses himself and his messages is to bring, not only does he bring people to repentance, but he also brings his word to teach, as, he, as what Paul told Timothy. It's to teach, it's to correct, it's to preach the doctrine of the Bible or, or the words of Jesus Christ and what God has said, and to bring everything into order according to the way that God has established things. Amen. And all of these things come through obedience. All of these things come through surrender. 
Because in order to be obedient, you have to surrender what you are to accept the words of somebody else. You have to be willing to surrender yourself. Amen. That's a very hard thing. Amen. It's a very difficult thing to surrender yourself, to surrender your life, to surrender your will. It's a very difficult thing to do. We say, well, it's easy. No, it's not. Amen. Think about the time when you first realized that it wasn't the man behind the pulpit or whoever it was that was bringing a feeling to your heart of condemnation. And you realize that you were not in a position that was pleasing unto, unto God. And you were in that position and you didn't know, okay, well, how do I get out from underneath it? It wasn't something that was happening in your mind. It was something that was happening here because you were God's child. Because God was dealing with you. Amen. Now, God has dealt with lots of people. But there's lots of people that never yielded themselves to him. Amen. Because when Paul went to Mars Hill, remember Mars Hill was this place where all of these different people would get together. Amen. Maybe you would even say it like this. It was all the tinfoil hat people would come. (laughs) Amen. And they would talk about all of these conspiracies, all of these new things, and they would all come together to hear some new thing. And Paul walks by and he sees that, you know, there's something about it that there's this inscription that is on this little rock or this little place here to the unknown God. And Paul, when he walks by, he says, all right, I'd like to say a few things. And people said, well, let's hear what this man has to say. Amen. We like hearing new things. And then Paul begins to preach. Paul begins to speak about a man that's called Jesus Christ. Amen. And begins to tell him that this man was actually nailed to a Roman cross. And this man was buried in a tomb. And this man that was buried in the tomb had the stone rolled away from his tomb. And he is arisen. People have seen him. He was with the disciples for around 40 days and he had sent it on high and he sent his spirit back to us. And there were some that heard it that said, oh, this man is nothing but a babbler and a fantastic storyteller. Amen. But there were others that said, wait a second here. We want to hear some more of this. Can you come back tomorrow? Amen. And speak of this a little bit more to us. There's something here that out of all of the things that we have heard through all of the years is coming to this little place here is that nobody has spoke words that has caused a stirring down here. There is nobody has ever spoke that has stirred me quite like that. There were others that said, well, it didn't do nothing for me. And they just wandered off and they didn't care what was said or what any more that he had to say. But there were those who were predestined to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And when they heard it, Amen. They recognized there was a pull that was something they couldn't explain. Maybe they had been going there. You know, it's astounding sometimes. I like to, just the way I like to look at things is sometimes you look at people that have been very successful in life and and I sometimes will like to read maybe autobiographies or learn a little bit about them to see what got them to the place that they were at. And you begin to see what their philosophies in life were and and all of these different things. Amen. But you also will find that at some point, those people knew that they were missing something. There was an emptiness there that all of their success could not satisfy that little emptiness. And there's some that they've searched for it and they never did find it. Amen. Amen. But there were others that as they were looking for that filling of that empty place, they found it through Christ. Amen. Amen. And many times it's those people that aren't willing to surrender because of the cost. Amen. Amen. There's a cost, amen, from this world to walk in the next kingdom. Amen. Amen. And this kingdom that God, that God has called us and placed us into, in that kingdom is a very, amen, it is a very, When you, it's like opening a door into a room that you didn't know that things in there could be so amazing. And you open that door and walk through it, and all of a sudden you realize there there are colors that you see, there are things in there that you see that is not ever associated with the other side of the door. But that's what God has for us while we're living here in this realm. Amen. But the battle that we face living in this realm is these eyes. 
Amen. As these eyes look around and they see what the world is, they see what the world has to offer, these ears hear what the natural voices are saying and what they are offering. And God says, I've got something that is even better than that. Amen. Amen. And if God can just get you to focus your natural eyes away from the natural things and get spiritualized to focus on the spiritual things, you realize then, amen, what it is that God has called you to. Amen. 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 There is a kingdom. There is a power. Amen. There is a, you, you're walking in a, with people in a realm that physically you can't even see with your eyes. We know that right now in this room, there are so many angels sitting here amongst us because the angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear him. Amen. And so if we fear him, then he's come with us. He's come with you. Amen. There's a heavenly host that is here this morning. Amen. That we can tap into. Amen. By our faith in what God has promised us. Amen. So this, this very first part, everything that God has for us comes by obedience. Amen. Amen. It comes by obedience, not to the words of men, but recognizing that it's the words of God that is calling. It is the word of God that is calling us. Amen. Now, if we go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, we want to read verses 32 through 36. So in Hebrews 10, starting at verse 32 there. Now we're speaking of this, trying to bring it back here to speaking about the fact when God calls you. God has called you. You recognize his voice. Nobody's pushing you. God is drawing you. Amen. And you've give your heart to God. You've Amen. you've realized that there is a new and a better way to live. And as you're stepping into this new walk, Paul says here in Hebrews 10 32, but call to remembrance the former days in which after right. ye were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Amen. Well, what did you endure? Amen. Some, depending on where your start was, if you came right out of the world, you had former associates. And those former associates, you were so excited about what God did for you, you wanted to go tell them so they could experience the same thing, and they didn't share the same enthusiasm. Amen. They said, oh, this guy, he went and got religion. Amen. Yeah, he went through some hard times. He went and got himself some religion. Amen. But just wait, he'll be back with us again. Won't be long. It'll fall off. It'll fade off. But when he gets something real, when that believer gets something real and they get illuminated, they begin to find out, amen, just how much the world appreciates God's word. They don't appreciate it very much. Amen. And they start to make fun of you. They start to laugh at you. Amen. And they think, well, I wonder what happened. You know, again, they went off on the deep end here. They kind of got off and, and got God. But, but boy, they'll be back. They can't stay. And pretty soon they become a laughing stock in their old world in which they live. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because there's a growth coming. What did Jesus say? Wherever the seed was planted, if it couldn't endure being made fun of, if it couldn't endure being made laughed at. Okay, so that part. We also realize, but what about this? What if you grow up in church? What if you've grown up in a message church? Well, nobody's laughing at you. Everybody's rejoicing with you. Amen. But there's still something that is going on with you because before God gets a hold of you, you have dreams. You have ambitions. If you're a young person, you're Wondering, what is my life going to be like? How am I going to make it? I don't want to live as a poor man. I want to have a nice house. I want to have, you know, a a nice place with some acreage on it. That's what my vision is. That's what my dream is. Amen. And one day God comes knocking at the door. Amen. And he says, won't you come and follow me? 
Amen. And when you have to make that decision, you begin to realize your ambitions don't match God's ambitions. Right. Now what are you going to do? Right. Come on. Amen. Are you going to surrender your ambitions to God's ambitions? Are you going to surrender your thinking to God's thinking? Amen. Because you don't have to. You don't have to surrender it. Right. Amen. You have to make that choice. Yeah. Amen. I was reading a quote the other day. I don't have it in front of me, but Brother Branham was talking about the decision. God, because we believe in predestination, it doesn't do away with the fact that you still got a decision to make. Right. Yeah. Amen. God, by foreknowledge, knew what choice you would make, right. yeah. but you still had to make it. Amen. And if you didn't want to be saved and God saved you anyway, then Brother Random talked about this. He said, well, then he did Adam and Eve wrong in the beginning. Right. Amen. Amen. But they had a decision to make. And before every person is the tree of death and the tree of life. Yeah. Amen. Every person has to make the decision of what they want. You say, well, why would people choose death? Why would people choose death? Because our enemy, the devil, went to make a kingdom that was more beautiful than God's. Right. Amen. Amen. He wanted to present to you why it is better to serve his, in his kingdom, to live in his kingdom, than it is to live in God's. Amen. He wants to be, the devil wants to be your leader. Go ahead. The devil wants to be your head. Yeah. Amen. And so, in order to catch your attention, amen, he's got to present why it is a better way to follow Him. How your life could be better to follow Him. You'll feel better if you drink. You'll feel better if you're partying. Amen. You'll feel better, amen, if you're, if you're building toward a million dollars. You'll feel better with that money in your wallet. I tell you something, it doesn't change one thing about how you feel whether you've got a $50 bill or a $5 bill in your pocket. It doesn't do anything in here. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you sad. Amen. And if you say, well, I'll just go buy something. After a while, it gets old, whatever you bought. Or you lose interest in it. It doesn't have your attention anymore. And pretty soon you got a whole collection of junk that you're not interested in. Amen. But that's what the devil offers. And at the end of it, we know that the wages of sin is what? It's death. That's what the enemy has to offer. He has, doesn't have anything that is worthwhile for you. Everything he offers destroys your body. It, and not only does it destroy your natural body, but it will destroy your soul. He said, but I, but I know some really fine people. Amen. I know that there's some... And I, now, don't misunderstand me. God has people in all classes financially of life. Amen. So this isn't... Sometimes you can take it the other way. Oh, that brother, he's doing pretty well. I wonder what he sold out on. <clears throat> well, maybe God blessed him because he's been obedient Amen. to him. Amen. 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 Brother Branham talked about the one man who busted concrete and now he owned the whole valley. Right. Amen. God blessed Amen. him with it. Amen. God blessed him with it because he could handle it. Amen. 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 So God knows what to give us. Amen. But the most important thing for us to remember, and you know, sometimes when people get a little jealous eye, they say, well, we all know it's going to burn anyway. <laughs> it's all going to burn anyway. Amen. But yet down here, it's like, well, before it burns, I sure wish I could have something like that. I sure wish I could have something like that. I wish I could go on vacations like that. I wish I could, I wish I could do certain things like that. Boy, that would sure be so nice. Amen. But what does God want? Amen. When he called you in the first place, he, we realize that we're not just called to be called. Amen. We're just not called and we're just filling up a space until we leave here, whether by rapture or by, by way of the grave. Because we're all going to leave here at some time. We know that. Amen. But we're not just here filling up space. There's a reason why we're here. God has a purpose for you being here. There's something in your life that God has put in there that has to be expressed for the organism of the bride of Jesus Christ to flourish. Amen. God has a purpose for every one of us. Right. We know that because the Bible speaks of it. Amen. But we've got to speak to the one who is our director Amen. to find out exactly what it is and how he wants us to operate. Yes, Amen. God has a way, Amen, of bringing what we need at the right season, at the right time to further our growth. Amen. And what he's wanting us to do is 
Like the old song says, get your eyes on him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and the things of earth will go strangely dim. Amen. Amen. But the pull and the battle that you face in life, it's not a fake battle. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's a real battle. Yes, Amen. You might be able to mask that battle when you come to church every once in a while, but who you are when you leave. Right. What you do through the week where the battle is at. Oh, yeah. Amen. The, the battle can, goes on all the time. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It changes as you grow. Yeah. Amen. As you surrender one thing to God, amen, then there's another battle that comes. Yeah. And many times it's the trial of obedience to follow God because as you learn what it is to follow His still small voice when He speaks to your heart, amen, He does still speak. God still speaks. Yeah. Amen. He speaks to your heart. Amen. When you know what exactly you're supposed to do, a direction in which He points you towards, you know exactly that it is Him that has taken that step. Amen. And you try to explain it to somebody. They don't get it, but you do because He spoke here. Amen. Amen. You spoke, he spoke here. Amen. And it comes through your experience in growing. Spiritually growing. Because when a person is first born to the Spirit, they're not a spiritual adult. That's what Paul said. He wrote in his word. He, he wrote to the one church, he said, I would, the Corinthians, I would love to uh, bring you something very, some real, I'd love to present to you a nice tomahawk uh, cut st- uh, ribeye. I'd like to present that to you, but I can't yet because you're still here and you still need some milk. Right. Amen. Amen. But you're not always going to need milk as you advance. Amen. 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 You're not always going to need milk. You're going to grow. Amen. To where that you can take of the meat of the word and know what it is to follow the still small voice. Follow God as he is leading you. Amen. Amen. But as you started out in every step. Amen. There you are. It seems like you made a gazing stock and people are wondering what in the world and what kind of a decision have you made in the first place. Amen. Amen. But then in verse as we go to verse 33 there going back to the scripture. It says, partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used, for ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves, amen, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So we want God's will. Amen. We want what He has for us. Yeah. Lord, I want to walk Your way. I want to walk. I want to say the things You want me to say. And I realize that even at the time of when I'm supposed to say them, I don't even have to think of them. Because yeah. wow. You said I would speak. I would use Your lips. I would use Your tongue. I would communicate. What? Amen. I will be the one that's speaking. Amen. I will be projecting myself through You, right. just like Philip did to the eunuch. Amen. Just like Philip did at Samaria. Just like the believers have done through every age thereafter. Amen. Amen. Led of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are that light that is on the hill. That's what Jesus said. You become a light. What is the light? Is that light because you carry a Bible and some message books? No. The light is that what is in there is alive. Amen. Amen. And you're moving by a different leader. You're moving by in a way that is strange to the world. Amen. You're moving in a strange position. You're moving in a strange way that that people don't even understand. And 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 the one thing also that you find out, and I know Brother Jeff can certainly attest to this, is that when God begins to deal with you, even people who worship with you don't understand what you're doing sometimes. Why would you do this? Or why would you go here? Or why would you say that? Or why? what what are you doing? You say, well, I'm following the leading of the Lord. Well, I guess. Okay, I suppose. And Brother Branham said this. He said that when you're following God, you will do things that was even against your own better judgment. Amen. You know, Brother Branham talks about one of those things. And he says, moving out to Arizona. He said, why would I move out to Arizona? I got a parsonage here that's already taken care of. I don't have to pay to live there. The church has built it. And he says, and I've got to take my family out to Arizona. There's no churches there. He said, it's spiritually, it's a spiritually dry place. He said, I get to Tucson. He said, and 
That's the biggest bunch of proselyte fighting I've ever seen. He said, there's no place that I can go to take my family to church. Amen. But God had to have him out there for a reason. Amen. And I'm not saying that people moved out there. They have done wrong now. God's got ministers that have settled out there and, and things of that nature. But Brother Brandon was saying, he said, I would not advise you to come out here. He said, the wages aren't very good. The housing is and food is expensive. Amen. And the things that he was even saying is, is that when he talked about that, it's like, I wouldn't have made this decision to leave all the friends and people that I have here. I wouldn't have made that decision, but God directed me to go. Amen. Amen. So he went at the bidding of the Lord. Amen. And we know that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. Now, Brother Branham obviously is a prophet. But he was still a son of God, just, in, and, and just as you are. Amen. Amen. You're a daughter of God. God's no respecter of person. Amen. God still leads his people on a daily basis. When Brother Branham left, we know that leadership did not leave. Amen. That leadership is here Amen. for every single one of us. Amen. Amen. But we have to then walk as we, with the understanding that we have. Amen. With the understanding that we have, we have to walk with that leadership and be certain that we are led of God. Amen. Amen. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, in the message that is called Hear His Voice, of paragraph 81, he says, now let's go back off of this modern day until a day that's passed. Let's go back to the days of the early times. And this voice of God has come to men in all walks of life, in all ages. No matter if you're a farmer, if you're a shoe cobbler, whatever you may be, God still speaks. Amen. If you're a sinner, if you're a prostitute, harlot, if you're a drunkard, if you are what? A local church member. Yeah. Nominal. Whatever you might be, the voice of God still waits to speak to you. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking now of Moses. When he was already 80 years old, and had 80 years of theological training, and he knew the scriptures, he knew them well. Now this morning, this is about where the message sits. Come on. We've had all kinds of training, all kinds of teaching, amen. amen, and he had a promise to him that he was going to be a deliverer of his people. But yet, just knowing the scriptures, and being a formal church member, of that modern church in that day, he took the thing over in his own hands and tried to do it. Amen. He slew an Egyptian. You see what you do without listening to God? You just mess it up. Right. Amen. Amen. It just gets messed up. And so that is the danger with all of the information that we have today, what the message is, the power that lays on the message by the Spirit of God, Amen, is that we have to be careful that we don't get ate up by our own zeal, Amen. but that we follow God's leading to fulfill what He wants done. Amen, Amen. There's, that little, there's that little chorus sometimes or song we sing, I'm a tool for the task. Amen, and we're so, we get so inspired. Well, I want to be a tool for the task. I want to be used of God. I, wanna, I, want, to, I want the world to know that Jesus still lives. Yeah. Amen. And we're supposed to do X, Y, and Z according to what we see in the message in the scripture. I'm going to set out to do it. Well, you can set out to do it if God sends you. Right. Amen. Amen. But if he don't send you, then you just better hold on. Amen. Amen. Until you hear what he has to say. Yeah. Amen. Because God, when he begins to speak and to do the things that he promised, we know the story uh, about, the, about the little woman amen, who had sent her son off to Bible school. And she had gotten sick. Amen. And as she had gotten sick, there was a little mission that was down there on the corner. It wasn't tied in with the rest of the denominations that believed that there was a living God that could speak. Amen. And they were in prayer one night. Amen. And they didn't know this woman. But they were in prayer one night. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. It doesn't say exactly how they knew, but God knows where that person lived. Amen. He's very specific. You don't think God don't know anything about you? He knows everything about you. Amen. He knows even the slightest detail. You know, when you start to get through a very 
very time in your life where it seems like everything is caving in on you and seems like nothing's going right. Job ain't going right. Maybe the business ain't going right. Things at home ain't going right. All kinds of trouble. Amen. And you begin to listen to what the devil comes and whispers in your ear. God don't care about you. God don't care about you because if he did, he'd never let this happen to you. Amen. And yet God knows exactly what's going on. He knows every circumstance that's going on in your life. Brother Brandon was talking about when, when the Apostle Paul, amen, had his eyes, amen, blinded by the Holy Spirit on his road down to Damascus. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes to Ananias and tells him, and Brother Branham just, just brings, it, brings it to life. Amen. He says, yeah, you go down this street here over two blocks, go down the right, go past the fountain. Amen. And when you go past the fountain, it'll be the White House on the left. Just step in the door. You'll see a man that's far. It's as far as he's got. He's laying on his face on the floor. Come on. God knows everything about you. If God can know, if not, God can know those details. Amen. God knows every detail about you. He knows where you live. He cares about you. His eyes are on you. He hasn't forgot about you. Amen. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what's going on. Amen. And there was a brother who was speaking of, Brother Brandon was, uh, uh, I think it was Brother Dawson Riley or one of the brothers was speaking about this woman that he knew and brother, when the line of discernment was going on. And I'm only saying this for this reason about God knowing about you. Is this man knew that woman that was being discerned and says you live on such and such a street and you live in an apartment like 176 and a half. Yeah. And that man said, oh, well, that's the first time that it's wrong. That's the first time it's wrong because that woman don't live there. Well, little did the brother know that she had moved there that day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God knows where you're at. God knows about you. He knows about your trials. He knows about your troubles. He just wants to see if you lean on him or not. Amen. Amen. He'll let you see. If, he wants to see if you'll just lean on him. Amen. He wants to see if you will obey him. Amen. Even when it looks like everything that you're doing is falling apart, people are questioning your decision making on what you're doing. Amen. If he's told you something, then hold on to what he said. Amen. 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 Even when things are falling apart. Amen. Abraham, staying up on that old dry plain, was there by the word of the Lord. God put him in a place where it didn't look like his herds could even survive. But that's where God wanted him. Amen. Amen. And when he got in trouble, how did he get in trouble from leaving that land, even in a state of drought? Yep. Amen. He got in trouble. Amen. And sometimes we want to make, and, and this is where, again, you have all kinds of voices. When things are going wrong, everybody wants to, they have the best idea of what they think you should do. Right. But if you know what God has told you to do, hold tight. Yeah, Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, true Israelites. Amen. Standing. Amen. Before this great image, knowing what the words of the king said, but way back in their ears, and they knew the word. We're not to bow down to any graven image. Amen. You know, and other people of the Israelite were saying, well, I guess maybe God wouldn't mind this one time. He'd forgive us because it's to spare our own lives. But God wanted to see if he had believers who would believe his commandment. Amen. Amen. That's what they had to live by in that hour. Live by the commandment of God, and we still live by the commandment. We're not supposed to bow down to any other thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And they stood true. Amen. And it didn't look like that God even cared. Come on, brother. Amen. It didn't look like God even cared because they went through the whole process of getting everything ready, and not one thing moved. Amen. There was nothing that moved. There was no spiritual wind come through. Amen. Daniel didn't come rushing. A messenger come from Daniel saying, hold tight, brothers. Amen. It's going to be okay. God's on his way. They didn't have anything that spoke of that, but they had the word that said, do not bow down before any graven image. We're Israelites. We're a peculiar people. We're strange. We're separate from the world. We're not, even though we're in this strange land, we're not supposed to partake of it. Amen. We're not supposed to bow down to their gods. Amen. That's what got us here in the first place. Amen. We're going to stand true. And when they stood true, amen, here they were. They were the king's favorites. 
Amen. But the king got so incensed. You want to know what madness does. Amen. The king got so incensed they didn't care how much money, because he spent a lot to keep to put them privately, to raise them and to teach them. I wonder what their tutors got. Amen. And yet God blessed them, amen, mightily to give them wisdom and understanding in the Chaldean, in the Chaldean sciences and things. Amen. And yet, because of his pride, amen, and because they thought, well, you know, and there were other Israelites maybe thinking, well, you know what? This Belteshazzar, I mean, it's just an image to Daniel. He's a prophet of God. Does it matter if we bow down to him or not? Isn't God deal with him? Does that matter to God? It did matter to God. Amen. Because when you read the way that Paul writes things in the scriptures, amen, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Christ first. Amen. Follow him. Follow his leading. Follow his word. What he directs and what he tells us to do. Amen. But there's those brothers standing just as faithful as they could. Resting in the word of God. Amen. That said, thou shalt not bow down. Amen. But God was getting ready to do something as a testimony to all of the others who decided that they were going to bow the knee. Come on. They waited until, and, and they waited and they were saying, well, I suppose this is going to be it, huh? I guess we're going to go down. Amen. That doesn't seem like there's no rescue. The, the king hasn't changed his mind. He's, I've never seen him that angry before. He's not going to change his mind. He's got to make a point. And he's going to make that point with us. But regardless... Amen. Who puts men in positions of power? Who raises up their kingdoms? It's God. Amen. We follow. We don't follow man. We follow God. Amen. And so as they humble themselves, amen, in obedience to the word, where it looked like it was to their own destruction, God was getting ready, amen, to show the rest of the unbelieving Israelites, amen, what it is to stand for a living God. When you stand for him, he'll stand for you. And he won't be late, he'll be right on time. Amen. He'll do exactly what he promised. Amen. You want to know the light of God and see it shine, let a testimony come forth. I stood on what God said. Amen. And I was persecuted for it. I was made fun of for it. Amen. But I stood upon and I did what God told me to do. And you watch that light of the word because the light of the word is the manifestation of it. Hallelujah. Amen. The manifestation of the power of God, making it light. Amen. That will cause others to say, well, if you've got a God that can keep you, would he keep us? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Let me show, let me get you in contact with him. Let me show you how to, let me show you the way. This is, this is God's approach. Amen. To be in obedience. Amen. To listen to the things that God has said. But as we're going back to this thought here, amen. Moses with all of his theological training, Moses with all of his understanding, amen. Within himself as a person, he could not further what God had wanted to be done. He could not further what God wanted him to do. Amen. Within himself. He could only do it as he was led of God. Amen. But he knew by the word that he was born a peculiar birth. His life was spared. He was raised in the Pharaoh's house. Become very mighty in Pharaoh's house. Led armies into victory and into battle. Amen. And God led him with all of his wisdom. He let him fail. Amen. Because God never asked him to do it himself. God said, I'm going to do it. And when he came to Moses on the backside of the desert, he said, I have heard the cry. He says, and I am going down through you. Amen. It's not going to be you. Amen. It's going to be me. Amen. I'm going to speak. I'm going to be the one that's in. That's. But all you got to do. It's just listen to what I tell you to do. Amen. Amen. Just listen to what I tell you to do and you'll overcome. Amen. The battle's already won. Amen. The people are already coming out. Amen. You're the one that I have raised up. Oh, no, they weren't wrong in what they told you. You just got a little bit ahead of me. Yeah. Amen. There are some things you had to learn first that man's ways are not my ways. Amen. 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 That man's ways and approaches of doing things are not mine. Amen. Because man tried that. And he had been living it. In the fall in the Garden of Eden. When they chose the tree of knowledge. 
Man chose to live and to shift for himself. I got a better way I can do it. And Brother Branham speaks of this. He said, where in creation do you see animals building better houses than man does? They're always adapting. They're always changing things. The house that was built 30 years ago, 10 years ago, they've already made changes to the way they're built today. They're constantly improving things. Amen. Living off of that tree of knowledge. Amen. But the birds who live by, who are fed by God, amen, they still live the same way that they did before. Amen. They were relying upon God. That's what makes a Christian so strange. That's what makes following his voice, it makes you strange to so many people. Amen. Because you're trusting in him. You're trusting in his care. You're trusting in his divine providence. Amen. You're trusting in His leadership, and you're trusting in His power. Amen. Because His power is what changes things. His power is what goes forth and shines forth His light. Amen. And so when a person is born of the Spirit of God, there's something that happens to them. They see the Bible and the words that God wrote in a different light. God comes and quickens those words at times when you have need of them, directs your path, shows you what to do, Amen. But the natural man looks at the same book you read and doesn't get the same thing out of it. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, towards the latter half of that chapter. Amen. The natural man cannot even begin to understand the spiritual things of God. So should it surprise us that if God spiritually comes and directs you to do something that is not out of the line of His Word, and you tell somebody who's a nominal Christian... That they would say, oh, I don't know about that. They're not coming behind you and saying, well, we're supporting you 100%. I believe God spoke to you. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I guess we'll just find out. Amen. But when you are listening and you know that it was God, just in the instance as it was with Brother Branham, as it is in the instance with you. Amen. Amen. We've... God doesn't just speak to prophets, you know. He speaks to all of His children. Just the office that people are in, they're given specific things to be able to see. Amen. We're not all asked to go way up on the high to see way over. One already come and did that. Amen. But we're to live underneath the word that God has given us. Underneath that word, there's still direction that comes to us. Amen. No matter how long we've been walking with the Lord. Amen. We're still Walking under obedience. Now, if we go to Genesis 22. In Genesis 22, we're going to talk about here Abraham, which is, again, a familiar subject to us. But Abraham was called out of all of the peoples of the earth. He was called by God to go dwell in the, go leave his the plains of Shinar, and go to a land that God would show him. Amen. What a strange thing that was. Amen. For a man to just up and move everything that he had. Amen. He told other people about it, and they said, you know, I kind of believe that maybe some great being spoke to you. Mind if we come along? I suppose you could come along. Yeah, we we could go along together to this this land that God is going to show me. Amen. But that's not what God told him. Amen. But in Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2, we see Abraham after this great test that he had gone through. His great test had to do with obedience. His trouble came because of a lack of obedience when he went and the Philistine king wanted Sarah for his wife. Amen. His trouble came by getting out of God's position that he had for him. Amen. And so he learned some hard things. Amen. We've learned hard things. Amen. Just disobey what God directs you to do one time. Amen. And find out how God brings it back to where that you've got to make the decision again. Yes, I'll do what you've said. Amen. So in Genesis 22 and verse 1, we see Abraham now in this journey. He's, they've, he's been faithful. Lot is not with him anymore. God has already come to him. Amen. And now he's got another great test. You'd have thought that after Isaac come, they would have been all done. No, they weren't all done. Amen. He says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, 
Here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. Have you ever noticed that when God speaks to go do something, that in many instances, he doesn't tell you the whole thing and what he's going to do? Right. Amen. Amen. He doesn't tell you the whole thing. We spoke of Philip just a little bit ago. God told Philip, I want you to leave Samaria, the great revival. I want you to go out into the desert. God didn't tell him he was going to go meet a eunuch. Right. Amen. Amen. God didn't tell him what, what it was or who he was he was going to go meet or what he was even going to say. Amen. God just told him to go. Amen. Amen. You know, when you are set out for a mission or a purpose, you usually pretty have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do. Yeah. Amen. If anybody who's, any, any, any man who's ever had a son, who's ever worked on a car, who has ever been underneath that car, <laughs> amen, and don't have a tool, right. amen, you'll send somebody that's the closest, sometimes even your wife, Amen. Hey, I'm not going to crawl out from underneath here again. Can you go and can you go to the toolbox and get me a 22 millimeter box and wrench? Amen. You might, if it's your wife and she don't know tools, you might have to explain it a couple of times what that looks like. Amen. And where that number is on there. Amen. But eventually that person knows that you want them, what you want them to do and where to go. But here we see that God many times, he says, all right, I, I hear you. Brother, sister, I want, you to, I want you to get up and I want you to go two blocks down the street. Yeah. Well, we won't even get up because we say, well, why? Oh, yeah. Why two blocks down the street? Yeah. What is my purpose in doing it? Oh, yeah. Amen. And that's kind of the position that Abraham was in, in obeying God to a certain degree. Right. He didn't fully obey, but he started. Amen. Now, starting, it does mean something to start. Yeah. Amen. Even if we're not completely, fully obedient, because we're learning. Come on. Amen. Because we're learning what it means to follow Him. Amen. What it means to hear the still, small voice direct our heart. Amen. So here, you know, we see Philip then, you know, says, all right, I want you to leave and go to the desert. Okay, well, why am I going to the desert? God doesn't tell him. And so... Would we even make that effort to even go to the desert if we didn't know what was going to happen next? In the logical world, we would say no. I don't know what the purpose is. I don't know why I'm even going. Amen. The natural man doesn't understand supernatural things. Doesn't understand the spiritual things of God. Doesn't understand how God's economy operates. Amen, that he leads us step by step. We love that. Well, God's word is a lamp unto my feet. It is. Amen. But he leads you, amen, step by step. Sometimes it seems like it's so dark, you don't know where to put your foot next. Amen. God doesn't show you the end of the path. He just shows you where to put your foot next. And then the next step, and then the next step, and then the next step until you can see, oh, God wants me over here for a reason. So here Philip goes out into the desert, There's the, walks out there. Amen. It isn't very specific at what part of the desert he was supposed to go, but he knew that he was supposed to go. The Holy Spirit led him out there. Amen. And you can see him just kind of walking and thinking, okay, okay, Lord, I know that it was you. I know you brought me this far. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm in the desert. What next? You know, as he's looking around. He didn't even know what to look for. Yeah, come on. Amen. But he's, as he keeps walking, he sees a man, amen, out in the place appointed. Yeah. Come on. Out in the place appointed. Amen. amen. God was dwelling in Philip, and what was in Philip had to be expressed to that eunuch. Amen. 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 But Philip had to trust God's voice one step, one segment of that journey at a time. Amen. And then he gets out there in the Holy Spirit as he's looking around. I'm not, under, I'm not exactly sure how he even found that right spot. But God knew how to lead him. Right. He's looking around. And he says, oh, the Holy Spirit nudging him. See that man over there. Amen. Go walk towards that direction. 
Then he goes and sees that man and he's, he's reading a scroll. All right. Amen. And then he hears what he's reading. Amen. And as he gets even closer, then that man, that eunuch says, and, and then Philip says, understand what thou readest. Right. Amen. He says, I sure would like to, but I sure don't understand it. <laughs> Amen. This part, portion of Isaiah, he had Philip go out there to explain one scripture. Yeah. Amen, because that's what it took, that one little part of God's Word to bring the eunuch in. Amen, he had Philip go in there to explain that one scripture and explains Jesus Christ. Amen, and the eunuch, amen, because he was God's child. Amen, he says, well, let's go find some water. Amen, I know this is the truth. Amen, I know that this is the truth. What you speak of, something stirred in here. Amen. But Philip had to go, not knowing he was talking to the eunuch. Right. He just had to go. But Philip knew that if God sent him, he wasn't just sent out on some wild goose right. chase. Exactly. He knew there was a purpose in the things that he was doing. Amen. That's the difference between saying, I'm going to go save the whole world, and God saying, all right, I want you to go here and yeah. step here and step here and step here. All right, now that you're here, right. walk over to that man that's sitting in the airport terminal, terminal, uh, terminal that's reading his Bible. Amen. Amen. Go sit down close and, and now watch what happens. Amen. Amen. We think sometimes those things, does God still do that? He absolutely does. Amen. But he just has to find somebody who will listen to him. Amen. Amen. Who will act and receive his word when he speaks. Amen. Amen. The bride of Jesus Christ is moving into this fellowship with God that is so real. Hallelujah. That when he speaks, Amen. we say, here I am, my Lord. Right. Amen. We might not have said that when we were learning. Amen. We might not have said that when we were learning, but when we begin to understand what it is when he does speak, when he prompts us. Amen. You say, well, I don't, I don't have a ministry. I, every person in here does. Amen. Every person in here has a ministry. Amen. You have a ministry, those that are gifted with songs. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, you're prompted. Sing this song tomorrow morning. Yeah. Amen. Sing this song tomorrow morning. Because I haven't showed my minister what he's supposed to preach. I haven't showed him what he's supposed to preach. But the title of your song is what he's supposed to preach on. And he can't preach what I want him to preach until you sing that song. Amen. You think that you don't have a position in Christ? You don't think that your place is important? It is absolutely important for the running of God's great organism. A living, breathing church of the living God. We don't follow creeds, dead traditions of men. We've got a living God that leads us. Amen. Because God knows then that man, amen, that he is directed to preach that message by the, by the title of the song or the words of the song that the brother or sister decides to sing, amen, is for the man who goes and sits back in that corner that the preacher doesn't know anything about what's going on that happened to him last night, amen, or what's stirred in his heart, amen, and God knows exactly how to do it. It takes it completely out of man's hands and it puts it in the hands of a living God. Amen. A church that moves by that leadership, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Every single one of us has an important position. Amen. Don't ever sit and let the devil to think that you're nothing. Amen. Every cell in the body is important. Amen. 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 Let one thing get messed up in just one little tiny cell. Amen. Let the mitochondria get messed up in, in one little tiny cell of our body. Amen. And watch and see what happens to the function of your body. You end up going seeing the doctor, getting prayed for. Something's amiss. Something's wrong. Amen. And God's church is going to fire in all cylinders. So he's going to speak to every member of the body. Amen. From the youngest to the oldest, if we'll listen, tune our ears to him, tune our ears to the still small voice in what he is directing us to. Amen. We can fulfill his work and have a great part in it. Amen. And have a great part in it that is attributed to us. Yes. What did Brother Branham say when he talked about people that support his trips overseas? Right. He said every soul saved through those that have given their attributed to that soul that saved. That's right. that's right. Amen. Amen. Because they were willing. Right. Amen. They were willing. Amen. And when the more that you begin to walk with God, the more that you begin to realize money's nothing. It's just a tool. 
Amen. What was the warning that the Gentiles were given? What did Jesus say about the Gentiles? In the, when he was finishing his sermon, he said, what is it that the Gentiles seek after? He said, they seek after the 10 acres with the 5,000 square foot house on it. They're seeking after that. Amen. But the believer, amen, who has his spiritual eyes open, amen, realizes that he's got an even greater substance than what is here. Amen. Amen. A tent or a cottage, why should I care? Well, sometimes we think it really does matter. Amen. I'm not saying that we need to live in absolute squalor. God provides us what we have need of. Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying saying is, is that when we realize that we're a part of, that this is just a small portion. This realm that we're living in is just a small portion of our journey. Amen. Amen. We've, got a, we've got a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Amen. We've got a book in Revelation that tells us about it. Amen. Chapters in Revelation tells us about this city that God has gone to prepare. And we know that it's there. Amen. It's promised to us. You say, well, do you even see it? Well, it's there by the scriptures. Amen. If God said it, it's there. Amen. You see how simple it is to believe what God is directing us to do? Amen. Amen. It's simply believing what He tells you. Amen. He's got everything else worked out. He's got everything else worked out. Amen. Because that once Philip got out there into the desert, amen, and fulfilled what God wanted him to do, amen, God had something else for him to do, amen, that he couldn't walk there fast enough. Amen. He had something to do the next little minute there. Amen. And God translated him from one place to another that a man couldn't walk in a day. Amen. Does that God, has he changed? He hasn't changed. Amen. He's still the same. Amen. We say, well, we got air travel in this now. God can still do what he promises. Amen. God can still do and you still will get there what he has you to do. Amen. We just got to believe him. Amen. So, not trying to lose our thought here with Abraham and being obedient, but here Abraham was asked then, amen, by God, I want you to go do something that is against everything, against any conventional wisdom. Amen. But you notice here, is that in order for us to be able to obey a word, in order for us to be obedient, then there has to be a word comes to us. Amen. Amen. And when the word comes to us, then you have to make a conscious decision to act. Amen. 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 So what if Abraham, yep, Lord, I'm here. I want you to go take Isaac and I got a place for you to go. Well, I believe that was the Lord, but I think I'll just sit here in the tent. I think that was the Lord. I'm pretty sure it was, but you know, I'm just going to sit here. Did God speak to you, Abraham? What did he say? He said, well, he told me to go up over to this mountain. He's going to show me a place. Show me a mountain. Amen. But if that's all he did, sitting in his tent and telling other people about it, he still wasn't being obedient. Amen. And you'll notice after his experiences in the past, he didn't just sit there and say, well, I suppose he did speak. Amen. Do I, do I need to even prepare? No, he did prepare. He says, all right, let me go find Isaac. Amen, let me go get some wood. Isaac, we got to go. Lord spoke to me. We got to go this direction. And you notice that in this portion, Abraham doesn't go and tell everybody what he's going to do. He just goes, God didn't speak to Sarah about this. God spoke to him about this. Amen. 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 Now, it's not to say that he was keeping secrets from her. But as Brother Branham said, he said, what do you think she would have thought? Amen. What do you think she would have thought when he said, well, I'm going up to offer up an uh, an offering. Oh, that's fine, Abraham. Where are you going? Well, I'm going up to Moriah with Isaac. Then she sees him getting ready and sees the wood all chopped up and all loaded up. And I see you got the servants there, but I don't see any sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Amen. He could have been dissuaded. Yeah. From being obedient. Do you know that's what Brother Branham said about Brother Bud right. with the bear Come on. and the, uh, and the um, caribou? And Brother Branham says this if you've 
if you've read it. Brother Branham says this, we're walking down, we can see the camp, and Brother Bed, Bud says, amen, well, I know that these visions are true, Brother Branham, amen, but where's that bear? And Brother Branham said, it was the devil trying to get at me through Brother Bud to doubt what God said. Because Brother Branham could see with his eyes, there was no bear there either. Amen. But all Brother Branham knew was, if God said that, then it is, has to be. That bear will be there. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know how it's going to get there. But God is God. Amen. It doesn't make a difference how big or little it is. God can take and place whatever it is he can create it, however it is that he got it there, but it got there according to the way that God had showed him. Amen. But there were those around him that were saying, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to come from. Amen. So you start testifying of your healing when God has revealed it to you. Amen. And people look at you and say, you say you're healed? Amen. You're, you look like you're more sick than you were yesterday. Yeah. Yes, but you don't understand. I got a word from the Lord. I was up praying last night. I got desperate. Amen. God showed me. He spoke to me. He said, this is what I'm going to do. You're healed. Amen. Don't worry anymore. Don't doubt anymore. I've heard what you've prayed for. Amen. I've heard your cry. Amen. I'm answering you back. It's finished. Amen. If you've ever had that experience in your life before, it is one of the greatest things that it could ever be because you absolutely do not know how it's going to happen other than God said it would. Amen. Amen. And if God said it, then it's completely out of your hands. You don't have to worry about the logistics. You don't have to worry about who's going to be where and what and when and how and everything else. It's already done taken care of. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen. And that's what God is wanting of us. Amen. Can we be that obedient and believe what he says that he is? A, we say, well, God creates. Nothing's impossible with God. Right. Amen. Can you imagine? We know this, and I don't mean to keep taking more of your time, but can you imagine? Amen. When, when the message came to Mary. Amen. But, you know, we, we look at it, we read it with hindsight. Yeah. But if you could just put yourself in that position. Right. Put yourself in Gideon's shoes. I've called you. You're a mighty man of valor. Amen. And he's like, mighty man of valor. Is there somebody behind me? Amen. It ain't me. Amen. But God knew what he was. He knew he was a mighty man of valor. What made him that mighty man of valor is he had faith to believe what God told him. Amen. He had faith to believe what God told him. Amen. God knew that that little group of people couldn't fight anybody. Amen. And when they look in the Levitical law and what God said in Numbers and Deuteronomy to them, amen, there wasn't nothing that they could do. Their strength was insufficient. Amen. But their strength wasn't in their own might. Their strength was in the strength of God. He says, I'll fight for you. Amen. I'll fight for you. Amen. Just a little thought. Think about this for a minute. When Joshua goes up to Jericho and he's looking at it, he has believed every word that God spoke. That land is ours. Amen. When they come around there the first time, went through it, brought everything back. Amen. And we know what they said. We're like grasshoppers. We're we're weak. We're not strong like they are. There's no way we can take those lands. And we know that Joshua and Caleb went through the midst of the people. And they said, we are more than able to take it. Amen. Amen. And they said, well, why are we able to take it? You see how, what position we're in. He said, but God isn't looking at us. We're not looking at ourselves. This is what God said. He said, you have that land. I will fight for you. Isn't that what he said? Well, yes, Joshua, that's what he said. But, but boy, you know, he's still got to do some way in order to fight the battle. Amen. How is he going to do it? He can't use us. We don't have any weapons. We don't have any chariots. We don't have any war horses. We don't have nothing. We can't do it. And not only that, they're bigger than us. Amen. God loves to get his people in those positions to see who actually believes him. Amen. So they get in that position and they come around, they wander around the wilderness for 40 years and all of a sudden God says, all right, it's time to turn northward. It's time to go claim your inheritance. The old generation that didn't believe me died off. Amen. Now you're going to go over and take that land. Amen. Just like I promised. 
all right, it's time to go across Jordan. They went across Jordan. They say, I can't even see the other side. Look at all that water. Yeah. Amen. Joshua said, that's not a problem for us. Amen. We went across the Red Sea. I don't know what God's going to do, but we're going across. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And God says, yep, you're going across. Amen. At the worst possible time of the year, Amen. you're going across. Right. Amen. But this is what Amen. you do. Amen. Let the ark go before all Amen. of you into the water. Amen. Just listen to what I say. Amen. And when they did, amen, they could have said, what is them going out in the water going to do anything about the water? Amen. It didn't matter. Amen. How they tried to figure it. God just said, go do it. And when they did and obeyed God without trying to reason it out, without trying to understand it, amen, how it was even possible, God dried the water up. Amen. And they walked across. Amen. And then when they walked across, they come to the place of Jericho, which they were all familiar with. Oh, great big wide walls, chariot races all the way around the place. Amen. What a mighty place that it was. Amen. But you see, there was already a supernatural army that was in the land. Amen. 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 You say a supernatural army? Yes. Because when Joshua, amen, looked at the city, and he says, Lord, you dried up that... You dried up the Jordan. We got a cross here. Amen. It should be more of a vindication to the people that it's time. We're supposed to be here. This is the first city that you've led us to. But Lord, I know you can imagine the prayer of Joshua. Amen. There might be some come up and said, all right, Joshua, what's our plan next? Well, I tell you what, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh Amen. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go find out. Amen. I'm going to go find out because God's leading us. He led us this far. He'll show us what to do. Amen. And so he goes and as he's reconnoitering the big place and looking and seeing and watching at it and, you know, maybe in his own mind say, well, I know that within ourselves, we're not strong enough. Amen. But I remember what God said through Moses. It isn't by my strength, but it's by his might. Amen. That's how we're going to overcome. Amen. Amen. So he's in these thinking these thoughts. And as he's in his prayer, as we just dramatize it just a little bit, he's in his prayer. Amen. Thinking about these things, walking with his head down, meditating upon God. Amen. Saying, Lord, I know this is the hour. This is the time. I don't know how we can do it. It's beyond my thinking, Lord. But it's not beyond yours. Amen. Amen. And you said that you would fight for me. You would fight for us. You would go in battle before us. And as he's walking around one little, maybe a little step out from one of the great revetiments there, and he looks up, there's a man standing there. He don't look like the rest of them. I'm going to go walk a little closer and go talk to him. Amen. Who art thou? Amen. You know, he was by himself and he wanted to make sure he wasn't an enemy. Amen. Who art thou? Amen. I'm the captain of the host. Yeah. Right. Amen. If you catch that revelation, God's army was already there. God's army was already there. The captain of the host was already there. Amen. And told him, this is what I want you to do. You just obey what I say. Don't listen to the cat calls up on the, up on the, up on the top of the wall there. Amen. Don't let anybody dissuade you, but this is what you do. Amen. You just march around it. Amen. As I've directed, just march around it. And then when you march around it for the last time, when you march around it for the last time, you just give a big shout. Amen. Amen. And when they gave a big shout, that captain of the host knew they had been obedient to every word that they had been told. Amen. Amen. And then they went to work and shook the walls down. Amen. And, there were, and because of that, everywhere they went, everybody was afraid of them because there was a supernatural power that was there that no one could overcome. Amen. It didn't make any difference if there was walls. It didn't make any difference if there was chariots and iron, iron chariots and iron wheels and, and, and hordes of horses with, with great mighty warriors on them. They knew that there was another power there because they could not do anything to shake those walls. They couldn't do anything to break through those walls. They didn't have time to spend 30 years on a siege. Amen. They had work to do. But God had sent the captain of the host with his army. Amen. 
But I'd just like to leave, with the, leave you with this this morning. Amen. If God is directing your path, amen, and you're questioning whether there's something that God is asking you to do and you just don't understand, Lord, how can it be done? I don't see how it could be done. I don't see any way through it and what you're asking me to do. Amen. He's not asking you to worry about those details. We serve a supernatural God with a supernatural power that can change water into wine, that can stop a water, that can cause a wind to, draw, to, blow, to blow the Red Sea. Amen. That can open up the blinded eyes. Amen. That can heal a crippled leg. Amen. And the greatest thing of all, that can change a stony heart. Amen. And bring life to that heart. That it's eternal, sealed into the kingdom of God. Amen. And when you find that leadership drawing you, speaking to you, talking to you, amen, follow that voice. Amen. Amen. You might say, well, pastor, tell me what to do. He can't tell you what to do other than say, you need to pray. I can't send you out. Amen. I can send a blessing with you. Amen. I can tell you what I think maybe you ought to do. But Almighty God will speak to you that you'll know beyond any shadow of a doubt. Amen. Amen. Isn't that what they tried to do to Brother Branham many times? Well, Brother Branham, just say it this way and it'll be that way. And he says, I can't until God shows me. And it's the same thing with every single one of us. Amen. Amen. Don't get eaten up by your zeal, but don't sit back on your heels either when God says anything. Amen. Amen. Don't, you know, there's things that are wrote in the scriptures for our admonition. Amen. To see what happens when we don't fully obey. And there's many times we've experienced what has happened when we don't fully obey. Amen. But don't look at it as failures. Look at it as I was learning. I was learning that God wants to walk with me and me alone. Amen. 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 God just wants to walk with me. He desires to fellowship with me. That's why he saved me in the first place. Amen. Amen. He wants to fellowship with me. Amen. Let's stand this morning. I just, as we're thinking on these things, you know, many times there's things that people have hid in their hearts. And they got questions. They feel like, well, was that, does does God come in great big noise? He doesn't. He doesn't come in a great big noise. We know that with Elijah on the mountain. The rock shook and the, Great fire came roaring by. Elijah never moved until the still small voice said, right. Elijah. Amen. And again, people say, well, well, that was Elijah. He was a prophet. But you're his son and his daughter. Amen. Do, ignore, do you ignore your children right. when they call? God doesn't either. Amen. Amen. And he'll speak back. It isn't a one-sided conversation. Amen. God will speak back to you. Amen. But many times it takes us to get to a place of desperation to where that we'll wait to listen to the still small voice. Amen. Amen. And then when it speaks to be able to say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. What would you have me to do? Amen. Go down three blocks. Turn to the right. The house with the yellow door. Knock on it and open it. There's somebody sick in there and they've been praying. Well, I couldn't do that. Maybe that was just me. Maybe that was just a funny feeling. That's what we do when we're learning. But after we've learned, then we say, all right, I'm going down three blocks to the right. There's the house. I'm knocking the door. See, God's specific. Amen. It's specific. He knows what the house looks like. He knows what's going on inside. Amen. He just wants somebody that will hear what he says receive what he says, and act. Amen. So we're talking this morning, as we're closing this out, we're talking this morning about believers led of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To walk with God. Fellowship with Him. Amen. And to know that He is our guide. Amen. As we just bow our heads for a moment, with every head bowed, I'm not saying this because I have a vision of it or anything, but I know that God many times gives a message for a reason. Yes. 
But if God has been speaking to your heart about a certain thing, yes, and maybe you've not been willing to humble yourself to what He has had to say, to step out and to act because you've been trying to reason it out. Yes. You're trying to reason it out and understand how it could work. Would you raise your hand to Him this morning and say, God, I don't understand how it works. But Lord, you said that we're to have full confidence in you. Yes, when we can't see the end, when I can't see how it's going to turn, but I know that if you have spoken yes, and you have told me to take a step, then Lord, I'm not going to say why or how, or I'm going to hold back. But Lord, when I know that it's you that's been dealing with me, then I'm yes. going to take that step. Amen. And I'm going to fulfill what you have ordained me to do in this moment. Lord, I'm not going to hold back, but I'm going to step, and I'm going to walk with you. Yes. Lord, you said you use our hands and our feet. And we rejoice and know that God uses the human element, the human vessel, the human temple surrendered to you. Yes. But Lord, let us be able to humble ourselves and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, send me. Lord, I pray for each heart, Lord. Father, if they, Lord, sometimes we, we don't mean to do it, Father. But sometimes we're a little hesitant to step. But Lord, I pray that, Lord, that as we have heard the voice, Lord, it's not imaginary, it's not perceived. But Lord, when we know that something has spoke down in our hearts to act, then Lord, let us act as you've directed. And let us receive that word the same way that Abraham had to when he started out on his journey to the mountain at your command. Lord, we're grateful for your people here this morning. Lord, if there any, be anybody here that, Lord, isn't feeling well this morning, pray, God, you'll receive their faith in your word that, Lord, by you said, by your stripes, we're already healed. And Lord, just pray that, Lord, that everything will, Lord, will just be a, a tune into their, Lord, a message to their heart that yes. all is well. And Lord, we're just grateful to you, Lord, to be underneath your care. Yes, Lord, that you are, Lord, a mighty warrior, Father, and you are our Father and our friend. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with these people here this morning, Lord. And we pray this, Father, in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What, what song is that? Amen. I, I know those, there are songs that I know that are really good. And, and uh, the brother would come and sing that song. Amen. I'm nothing. Oh, for I have not the strength to praise you near enough. Oh, for I am nothing. I am nothing without you. Oh, take my voice and pour it out. Let it sing the songs of mercy I have found. For I am nothing. I am nothing without you. Amen. All my soul needs is all your love to cover me so all the world I am nothing without you. Take my body and build it up. May it be broken as an offering of love. For I am nothing. 
I am nothing without you. Oh, in all my soul, is all your love to cover me so all the world will see that I am nothing without you. my time here on this earth. Yes, Lord, let it glorify all that you are worth, for I am nothing. Yes, I am nothing without my time. Oh, take my time here on this earth. Let it glorify all that you are worth. For I am nothing. I am nothing without Yes, in all my soul needs is all your love to cover me so all the world will see that I am nothing without. Because he is in the lead. Amen. Brother. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace hallelujah Amen. Just look to the Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, we look to you this morning, Lord. Oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. will grow strangely dim in the light 
I'm so thankful how my mindful the Lord Jesus is of our every detail. Amen. Amen. Oh my, just the things that were preached, the scriptures that were read, just been going along, right along with what's been preached and read by many different ministers that have come through and just the last three Sundays we've been just going through with the young people about being fearfully and wonderfully made and predestination and how God formed them the way that they they look, the way they feel is exactly the way God wanted them to be. Amen. And that, you know, sometimes those things can be a stumbling block, but they also can be a testimony. And uh, just how Brother jo- brother Joel went right down predestination and everything just was a good culmination because I told him this morning, this might be the last one, uh, the last little lesson from this thought, but we're so, so great and so wonderful being a Christian. Because this morning, God took the example of the woman at the well. To everybody else, she just looked at a dark sinner. But when the Word hit that seed, it came to life. Something happened. Amen. <laughs> she had her own little Mars Hill experience. Amen. <laughs> That's right. You know, some, oh, it's, just, it's a mystery. But I'm so thankful I'm part of that mystery. Amen. That, you know, so many have heard the message. So many have sat on message pews. So, so many have read the Bible, but how many does it sink down in their heart and it be, and it changes their life, changes our thinking, amen? Oh, hallelujah. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Amen. <clears throat> I think uh, that one's in, I want to say D. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. prayer. I'll follow you, Lord Jesus. Oh, lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me. I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Yes, Lord. I will follow, lead me, Lord, I will go, you have called me, I will answer, lead me, Lord, I will go, lead me, Lord, oh, lead me, Sing uh, a song, I'd rather be an old time Christian. Anything I know, we'll sing that before we go. I tell you, the more, the longer I walk, the further I get down the road, the more I'm thankful to be a. I'd rather be an old time Christian than 10 acres and 5,000 square foot house. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. In this world I've tried most anything And I'm happy now to say There's nothing 
like religion in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the old and I want the world to know that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There is I pursue, I long to be a leader like a mortal man would do. I would like to be a millionaire with a million to bestow, but I'd rather be an old time Christian, hallelujah, thing I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Lifted since the Savior brought me out. I will tell the world both far and near as I travel here below that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway, and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway, and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, Brother Branham didn't just tell that story about going to Oral Roberts University as just a story or a testimony. But, you know, the, the bride of Jesus Christ, you know, like Brother Joel said, there's some that have money, but there's a lot of them that don't. <laughs> but, you know, who's our portion? Amen. What's our portion? Amen. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd rather have him than anything else in this world. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Just uh, that peace that, that, you know, we know as you know, Holy Ghost filled believers that we don't have to worry about our bank account. We don't have to worry about what the stock market's doing. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, our business or what, you know, the things that worry us the most <laughs> as mortal men. We don't have to worry about it because we're living in the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So thankful. The Bible, I think it's Philippians chapter four, says, "Be anxious, anxious for nothing." Amen. Be, don't don't worry about it. Amen. The Lord Jesus is in control. Amen. 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 God bless you. You're dismissed. If you need to go, let's just sing that chorus as we're dismissed. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian 